Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool with Swell Watch on SurfingMagazine.com. Wanted to give you a quick update on what's happened over the next couple weeks and possibly over the next few months too as we start heading out of January into February out of what's been a completely wet winter. A lot of swells too. Some of them haven't been all that rideable because we have had a lot of stormy surf and everybody's going, well, we're not in an El Nino, so what's going on? Describe some of that in my last video, but things are changing just as we speak right now. Things could really change quite a bit in February and might not all be for the better but things aren't looking that bad. So I wanted to break it all down and show you what's going on right now. So we'll take a look first at what's happening with Drought Monitor. Now they update this just about every week, so we might see some things change. But if we take a look, this is how things were looking about a year ago. This was uh, January 19th, 2016. As we start moving that slider across, we can see things are definitely changing. So as we look at the way things are right now, January 17th, 2017 anyways, this is about a week ago, we can see there's been a lot of improvement where we were once in a severe drought for most of the state. That continues to improve because we have have had a lot of rainfall but if you look there's still severe drought going on in parts of Southern California and there's still definitely notable drought going on in a lot of other areas so what's going on if we take a look at what's happening right now in our percentage of normal so far now this would be a measurement of what would be normal for this time of year from when our rain season began we can see that at hundred percent everything's well exceeding it. Everything, when we're talking to look at Northern California, Santa Barbara, uh, even down into Camarillo, into Ventura County, Los Angeles, everybody is far above normal uh, for what would be this time of year. But there's a little bit more to the story. That's the normal that would be at this point in time for the rain season. But when we look at the rain season in total, October to October, well, we're still just a little bit below in most areas. So the blue lines on all this chart, that's the total that we've had so far, and the red is the normal for the season. Only in one case of the measurements that I took here do we see uh, in a case where there is actually a total so far, which is Sacramento, which exceeded what the normal would be for the season. So we can see we're still below average. Uh, LA is just about right on, on par with that, and Irvine's just about there too, and so is uh, parts of Ventura County. But we're still not quite there yet. Now remember being in a drought, it's just not getting normal year. It's a normal year for many years for that type of rain, or we get a, a, enough of an excess over a longer span where we can actually fill up our reservoirs, get out of the drought completely. So we take a look at what's driving a lot of the weather, and of course everybody says El Nino, La Nina, and well, as I talked about in my last video, we've been in a La Nina. You can see it. This is more of though a neutral state. You can see there's warm waters off the equatorial Pacific. That's what a La Nina looks like. This is back in 2011, same time of year uh, right now in January, mid-January or so, and you can see there's a lot of cold water that really dominated the equatorial Pacific, and a lot of the Pacific as well. So where we are now, yeah, it doesn't look anything like La Nina. In fact, we never really were in a very strong La Nina to begin with, and I've discussed this a little bit in my last video, where once we get down into a negative one, or we get into positive one, that's when we're either into La Nina or El Nino. So we only dipped down just a little bit. You can see we were really high over here when we were in a El Nino, the last one. So looking at where we are now, we're just right above. We're, we might as well just say that we're right at ENSO neutral. And then most models show that we are going to continue to go into kind of an El Nino trend, but be cautious on calling it El Nino until you really start seeing it get up here into about a degree or so above. But at least it's not getting into a La Nina trend, which would then put uh, that dominant blocking uh, high pressure back in the Gulf and cause us all kinds of problems for weather and waves. When we look at the precipitation outlook from NOAA, and this was ran uh, just last week, about six days ago, this is for February, and you can see this B in here in this dark color, that means that we're at about a 40% probability of having below normal rainfall for the month of February. And uh, that outlook kind of jives with a lot of other stuff going on when we take a look at the models. So take a look at the jet stream here. This is uh, taking a look down from the North Pole here. We see Alaska, Baja's down here. So this is California and the West Coast right in this region. This is the point of interest. The jet stream and storms coming out then of the Western Pacific, we want them to stay at a low latitude. We want high, excuse me, low pressure here that dominates the Gulf of Alaska that would help the jet stream to feed storms in this way. Let's move the models forward in time though and see what happens. You can see that there's actually a little bump here and that bump 
that means that there's high pressure in that area right off of the west coast and that's stopping the jet stream from coming up so even though we've got some strong storms that can come out of the western pacific they're going to get buffered a little bit and just get thrown up to the north so you can see the pacific northwest would then get the bulk of these storms that would come in this is looking toward the end of the month and as we move the models forward even more in time, we can see that trend once they continue. There is a little ray of hope as the jet stream drops down a little bit once we get into the beginning of February. That would be great, and I'll show you a close-up of that in a second and what that means for weather. But look what's happening here. We, yeah, we've got low pressure here. This is a high pressure blocking pattern. So we've got some very strong undulations and that's not a very strong area of high pressure. It is a very sharp ridge though, pushing that up. So it'd be interesting to see how that does develop. Either way, when we take a close look at it, this is then the precipitation and also the uh, pressure systems, highs and lows. We can see what's happening right now we do have that high pressure dominating this area. So as lows want to come off of the uh, off the Aleutians, they come out of off Kamchatka, the Bering Sea and whatnot, they do get buffered to the north. Let's move the models forward in time, you can see that. So instead of having that atmospheric river pattern that we had for so long that was sitting off of the Pacific Northwest and feeding in tropical moisture storm after storm, high pressure now is going to start dominating the west. That means also some clear skies, some offshore conditions as we get into February, but rain will be hard to come by. In fact, moving the models more forward in time, we can see that there's some weakening once we get into the beginning of February of that high pressure, but there's not a very well established jet stream that we're talking about here. So let's move that a little bit more forward in time. We can see that rain would eventually reach Southern California from this system, which by the way has really only been back and forth on the models the last couple days or a few days ago they showed this wouldn't even happen. About a week ago it was like, yeah, it probably could. There's a very weak atmospheric river that might get drawn into this according to this long range model, but it's nothing like what we had before where we had a very strong atmospheric river pattern going on here. So some of that rain could even reach San Diego, but it's not a very well established pattern. Look what happens. High pressure then comes back into the picture and starts blocking the next series of storms that start heading our way. So once again, clear skies. In fact, we look this far out. This is a, I wouldn't trust the model this far out, but you can still see high pressure dominating the region enough to where the next set of storms get thrown to the north a bit. So it's not really good news for a lot of rain in Southern California. So moving the models even more forward in time, we can see that high pressure still wants to dominate this region. So this is jiving then with what a lot of the jet stream models are starting to show. Of course, the big question in everybody's mind is what is it going to do in the way of waves? Well, let's take a look at the FN mock uh, wave analysis models here and we can see that, yeah, you can see that pattern of where storms are starting to get thrown up north because of that jet stream pattern that's changing because we've had high pressure that's starting to build off of our coast. So storms do form. In fact, here's one dropping down. Um, coming down in an undulation of the uh, jet stream, but it's about to go throw back up north again. You can find out the timing on this one when it's going to hit Southern California, and of course the rest of the West Coast. Some of my reports on forecasts.surfingmagazine.com. But getting back to this though, point of the, this being is that after that gets thrown down, high pressure pushes it back up again. So it doesn't have a whole lot of time to build into a monster storm because it's undulating in this jet stream, and so it's not really finding a good uh, steady place to build into a large storm and then of course it loses a progression as it moves to the coast not good for weather but if you're watching the left side of the screen you can see a monster starting to build there but what would that do well once again with the jet stream being forced up and you can almost see the undulation by the direction of the mean wave here you can see that it probably wouldn't work us any favors we can take a closer look at that and watch here red low pressure blue high pressure you can think of that as being kind of a, a view of the jet stream we can see high pressure wants to build into Southern California as we get toward the end of the month. And then here's that system we were taking a look at that could bring a swell a few days after uh, they're reaching Hawaii. And then it gets thrown up to the north because of that high pressure once again over our area. So not necessarily good news in the way of waves. We would get swell out of this. It would be cleaner because the weather would stay farther to the north. But we got to see what happens, especially on the long range, once we get into February, toward the middle of February, on how high pressure is really going to evolve in the uh, northern Pacific. Right now, this taking a look at this just into February 2nd, that's not necessarily good news, especially seeing that the jet stream is starting to ride at a higher latitude. And of course, most of this storm would get buffered up against the Aleutians. And that's not necessarily good news for weather or waves in Southern California. 
So that's how things are looking right now. We're still not quite out of the drought. We still have some swells headed our way. It's going to be kind of dicey over the next few weeks as high pressure then builds in over the area and we get out of that atmospheric river pattern that we've had through much of the month of January. So we've still got a little ways to go. We're going to see how that unfolds and I'll have another video posting more updates on this over the next couple of weeks. And of course, you can always subscribe to my forecast at forecast.surfingmagazine.com. Those won't cost anything. You'll see that we have a free newsletter that gets posted to you as soon as one of my reports on there gets posted as well. And if you like this video, I hope that you did. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel. That won't cost you anything either. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and smile in the lineup.